one time I heard people in the corner of the room, it was pitch black, but I could hear people talking about killing me, plotting to kill me, and then I heard one of them walk up to the bed, and I could feel him lean over, and I knew he was wearing a hat, even though it was pitch black. And then he just spat on me and my face, and I could just, and by this time, I kind of knew by this point it was sleep paralysis, but I could just, it's kind of disgusting, I could feel this spit kind of in my eye socket. I was, I had my eyes closed, I was just like, that is disgusting. And even though I know that this is sleep paralysis, it is the most real feeling thing. It feels so totally real. Henry Fuseli's The Nightmare is recognised around the world as an interpretation of the night hag who sits upon the chest of sleeping people and suffocates them. In literature, there are many examples of this phenomenon. For example, in Ernest Hemingway's The Snows of Kilimanjaro, as well as in Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Sleep paralysis is experienced by around 30% of the population at some point in their life. There has been significant evidence that shows susceptibility to sleep paralysis does have a genetic component, which can be heightened with environmental factors. Although it cannot be fully understood, psychologists are able to explain the conditions in which it happens. Every night when you go to sleep, you go through different stages. And across those different stages, your heart rate changes, your brain waves change, your breathing rate changes, and so on. Then you come back up again through those stages and go into what's called REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And that's the phase of sleep that is typically associated with vivid dreaming. Now, when you're in that phase, the muscles of your body are actually paralyzed, presumably to stop you acting out the actions of the dream. Now normally you wouldn't even be aware of that because you, your consciousness would be wherever the dream is. You'd be, you'd just be enjoying or maybe not enjoying the dream. Um, but occasionally something can go awry and putting it very simply, it's as though your brain has woken up but your body hasn't. And so you become aware of the fact that you are in your bedroom, you can see your surroundings, but you can't move, which can be quite disconcerting. And quite often, the dream imagery is coming through into normal consciousness, and your mind is doing its best to try and make sense of this, and it can be very, very scary indeed. Professor Chris French is head of the Anomalistic Psychology Unit at Goldsmiths University. His interests include some of the more common theories surrounding sleep paralysis, such as the link with alien abductions. My own interest in sleep paralysis came about, as have a lot of my other interests, via a rather weird route. And in this particular case, um, I was interested in the psychology of alien abduction claims. And it became apparent pretty quickly that one of the important factors here is sleep paralysis. So um, it's, it's quite interesting that on occasion I've spoken to people who claim that they have been abducted by aliens and said, well, tell me about it. And they'll describe a classic episode of sleep paralysis. And you'll say, well, where were the aliens? You didn't mention any aliens. And they'll say, oh, no, well, obviously I didn't mention any aliens, because as we all know, the aliens are capable of wiping your memory for the rest of the experience. Now, if you're a, someone who is in the unfortunate position of having a lot of these attacks and you don't know what's causing them, it may seem preferable that it's alien visitation than the idea that you're losing your mind. In fact, I'd say it's neither of those two things. It's this thing called sleep paralysis. <laughs> Um, one of my students who suffered from sleep paralysis on a regular basis, um, he had one episode where he woke up and there was a cat next to his bed hissing at him. It wasn't an ordinary cat. Instead of just having an ordinary cat's head, it had an inverted cat's skull. 
and black goo was dripping from its mouth. Um, another uh, colleague of mine who is a scientist had uh, woken up and realised that his pot plant was basically growing and slowly wrapping him up. Carla McKinnon is an artist who has suffered from sleep paralysis for many years. After setting up the Sleep Paralysis Project, she used her own experiences, as well as stories from other people, to make an animated film called Devil in the Room. I remember getting sleep paralysis um, through, I suppose, from my late teens. Um, I didn't know what it was until I was in uh, my mid-twenties. Um, so I had a lot of weird experiences, um, some of which kind of remained unexplained for a long time. I've talked to a lot of people in America, and particularly in the southern states, um, who report demons, uh, normally quite Christian demons. Um, I get David Lynch films because um, because maybe I, I'm less likely to, I'm less inclined to believe that Satan is going to come for me, so I just get the, the dwarf at Twin Peaks. He's my version of that. And then, you know, people with um, cultural beliefs that there are particular kinds of visitors, uh, whether it's ghosts or, um, or, or certain kind of demonic forces, and if they have an image of what that looks like, then that will often, I think, appear to them. About a year and a half ago, I was having some real problems with sleeping. Um, and I was getting sleep paralysis a few times a week. And it was really, it was getting in the way of things. Um, I was finding it quite hard to function during the days. And then it suddenly struck me that these things that were happening to me in the night were actually incredibly cinematic. And I was so interested in the background to them that I thought I would do a documentary. So I started the Sleep Paralysis Project, which um, pretty much as soon as I started development for the film, I thought, well, if I'm going to do research for this, I might as well make it an open research project. I, I did a couple of interviews and then I started getting a lot of people writing to me um, from all over the world about their sleep paralysis experiences, a lot of which were way more intense than mine and um, a lot of whom had had quite traumatic kind of experiences, normally with the kind of cultural surroundings, so maybe their communities had made them believe that they were being persecuted by Satan. In one case, a woman was um, misdiagnosed repeatedly for years with various kinds of um, psychotic disorders or epilepsy, um, and when she actually took uh, the information about sleep paralysis on the website that she'd found, which was the project's website, to the doctor, her doctor had never even heard of sleep paralysis. And was a bit like, oh yeah, that does look like what you've got. I've got to take you off those really strong meds. Um, so, yeah, so hearing all these kind of horror stories. Um, and I, I used them as inspiration for the film, but... Um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of the things I heard, a lot of the visual things I heard, I then worked into the film. And I also recorded some interviews with people and used it, dotted it throughout the film. But then weirdly, um, a few months ago, and a few months after finishing the short film, I, uh, I woke up in the night and I was basically in my film set. And I had all the lights, all these things that I'd heard from other people that I'd then creatively interpreted into my film was being recycled by my subconscious into a sleep paralysis experience, which was totally horrible, terrifying. And I think that's what you find a lot with, um, with people is that their experiences in daily life will seep into sleep paralysis. bed was shaking and I felt like I was being strangled. The only thing I could move was my eyes, but I just felt like there was a presence in my room. It kind of had its own consciousness. Pressure. Dark. 
holding me and down, crushing. screaming and screaming and asking for help, but your mouth isn't moving. I started to cry out to Jesus, and I couldn't even say his name. I, I said, J -j -j. And then the next thing I know is there's this woman on top of there me. There was a woman sitting on levitated in bed next to me. She looked dead. animals all in my room like little squirrels little dogs different little you know regular world animals and they were all black black fur and then I felt pinned down and I felt something like holding me still from behind me and I could just feel that it was a it was male it's so real it, I can feel like his leg hair and his arm hair and I can feel him behind me, but I can't turn around. The bear over here is is our version of the Tokoloshi, which is a African demon who um, attacks and sexually assaults women and impregnates them. Um, this is our version of, uh, well, there's a pink dolphin in Brazil who's supposed to transform into a man at night and seduce and impregnate women. Um, uh, and these myths are all, they're interesting because, I mean, like the kind of incubus and succubus stuff, um, they can partly be attributed to sleep paralysis, they could partly be attributed to um, just your average kind of erotic dreams or nightmares. Um, because that's the other thing about sleep paralysis, a lot of people have highly kind of, highly sexually charged experiences, but which aren't necessarily pleasant, so it can be quite a confusing state. Um, but then there's also lots of other weird social stuff surrounding it, like it's um, with a lot of these demons it's suggested that they're used as excuses for um, unexpected or unwanted pregnancies um, or even as covers up cover ups for um, abuse situations. So I think a lot of these things kind of can't be seen outside of the complex network of social factors. Um, that that go into building a myth and i think um i think sleep paralysis as with ghosts you know i think sleep paralysis can explain a lot of ghost sightings but there's a lot of other things that also make people think that they're gonna see ghosts I think it's really important to, to get the message out there and I hope your film can, can do this to just tell people about sleep paralysis and reassure them that it's not ghosts, it's not aliens, it's not demons, you're not going crazy. It's this thing called sleep paralysis. It's scary but essentially harmless.